Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hello. And today we're going to be making sense of life through five movie quotes from movies we love. Yeah. Yeah. And stay to the end so that you will see all of them. We're going to be making sense yeah. of life through quotes yeah. from five movies we love. Okay. Yeah, it was Dodgepot. It was like... Dodgepot. Well, not Dodgepot. Right. It was clunky. It was all clunky. right. All right. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> and today we're going to be making sense of life through quotes from movies that we love. Five. I have a weird thing to my lips. Is it the dandruff? No. A fine. snowflake? <laughs> no. So we're shaking things up a little bit. Just kind of, you know, like just kind of taking the bottle and just kind of <laughs> stirring it up a little. Yeah, we thought it'd be kind of a fun, fun thing to do. And one thing that we love so much about movies is those, those particular bits of dialogue or lines that just hit hit you right over the face. Yeah, those lines you always remember. Yeah, we'd take some of our favorite quotes and then we'd talk about a little bit why they resonate so much with us. Mm -hmm. Should I start or should you start? Rochambeau, uh, rock paper <laughs> bow from Beatrice at dinner. You think killing is hard? Try healing. You can break something in two seconds, but it can take forever to fix it. You think killing is hard, huh? You wait in the bushes, the animal might outrun you or charge you. It's not easy to get your shot, hmm? Try healing something. That is hard. That requires patience. You can break something in two seconds. But it can take forever to fix it. And I like that because that is kind of the nature, first of all, of everything. It's the easier path. The destructive path is always the easier path, whether it's being self-destructive. It's harder to build self-discipline, self-esteem, to kind of work towards something little by little. And it's easier to just be like, is it even worth it, worthwhile trying? Yeah. Should I just kind of lay in bed all day or just kind of get lost in a sea of, of distraction? The reason I, I think about that is, oh God, I cannot explain it. Mm -hmm. Let me start again. Okay. I think of things like the need to be kind to yourself and understanding to yourself. Let's say, for example, you come from a tough childhood, like your parents maybe didn't give you every single thing that they needed to facilitate your smooth transition into, into adulthood. Or maybe you went through bullying in high school, for example, and broke down your confidence. You know what I mean? Those things that happen when you're younger, they definitely affect you when you're older still. All the mistakes, all the things that happened in the past, the bullying, the parent that didn't give you everything to set you up, that happens in like in a second, you know, like maybe say someone says something to you, it happens in a second, but it lasts a long time for you to heal. A lot of hurt and damage can be done with one word instantly, but then that could be something that is traumatizing and that lasts for a long time until you deal with it. That quote can be applied to a lot of things, but yeah. The great beauty. The most important thing I discovered a few days after turning 65 is that I can't waste any more time doing things I don't want to do. La più consistente scoperta che ho fatto pochi giorni dopo aver compiuto 65 anni è che non posso più perdere tempo a fare cose che non mi va di fare. That was very meaningful for me because I think a lot of times with people, we're so afraid to say no or we're so afraid to express things that we need from people. Just the thought of asking for being to be accommodated or to be understood, it kind of feels like an attack. You know, sometimes people have that idea of asking for, for support or needs as like, oh, I'm burdening this person. There's been, like, I could give you so many examples of me doing things because I felt like I didn't want to disappoint the other people. I'd always put their needs first and never put my needs first. So I would go along with things that I didn't want to go along with. And I would hate it. I, I honestly, I, I would never, whenever I never, I did, I knew I didn't want to do something and I went along with it, I would hate it. I'm grateful to be at a point where I know that it's okay to say no, but thank you. You know, you don't have to be like abrasive in, in, in your presentation of, your needs, you know, thank you for extending this gesture of support or thank you for wanting to spend time with me, but this is what I would prefer instead. That used to be so hard for me. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm already there. I'm not even 65 yet. I feel mm -hmm. like maybe not fully there, but I think you have more tolerance or the more strength to decide that you're only gonna do things that you wanna do when you are in a happier place, a more stable place. So if you're not as desperate, which he isn't, it is also easier for him to just do his own thing. So that's a big part of kind of being able to decide 
what you don't want to have to put up with anymore. But it's it's also a state of mind when you have enough self-respect and you realize, oh, you know, just because I used to put up with this, finally reached my breaking point. And it's actually, I, once I said no once, something I didn't want to do, or that was not great for me. And then you're like, oh, that felt really good. Okay, I'm just going to course correction there. I'm just mm-hmm. going to stay on this course now. You get a certain sense of your identity or who you think, you know, what you think interests you. And then, uh, yeah, you just don't feel the need to go against who you are who as you much. Who you are anymore, yeah. yeah. Now, all of a sudden, how am I going to tell them I don't like that even though I've been doing it for like 50 years? Mm-hmm. I've been doing it. And maybe they... If you, pr- if you present what you want or what you don't want anymore, they might be like, yeah, but you've been doing it for so long. What's going on? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you feel bad like, oh, I kind of led you on. You know what I mean? It's okay. Like even if after a hundred years of relating to someone in a certain way, it's okay to after the hundred years of doing the same thing that you didn't like and you knew all those all that time that you didn't like it, it's okay to say, you know what? This is, this is what I really would prefer. That is fine. And if anybody actually cares about you, if the person you're interacting with at that time cares about you, they'll be like, sure, I'm sorry that you endured this. I, I would have, you know, I would have definitely, if I knew you didn't want to, I wouldn't have done it. Let's figure out what we both like. Well, little women, just because my dreams are different from yours doesn't mean they're unimportant. Just because my dreams are different than yours doesn't mean they're unimportant. <laughs> sure everyone has someone in their life that has been disapproving of things that they wanted to pursue. So it's a pretty universal feeling. It's that thing where there's just a, uh, a good percentage of people in the world that feel like they have the right to tell others how they should live their life. Throughout my life, I've always wanted to, a lot of things, you know, I just want to kind of try everything. Most people, they want to limit that. And it bothers people when they see you just kind of wanting to experiment and and live and learn. That's also something to overcome is just accepting that there will be people that will always feel that the things that you are passionate about or want to pursue are not the things to do or are important. So it's being able to, at some point, get to just trusting your own instincts and your own drive for things and your own path. A lot of the times when people want to push you into a certain kind of direction, it's a lot of the times because you're changing the status quo, which they prefer. So this person, when they're knocking you down, it has, I find, less to do with you and your dreams being problematic, but more to do with the person kind of being selfish, really, because they don't want you to change things. You're growing and you're shifting towards a certain course and they don't want that because it scares them. And every single time people change, when you change the people in your life it threatens them what they know to be true how they live their lives and it forces them to change too because when you're changing you're adjusting the dynamics in that relationship and so they're going to have to change too and sometimes when people are trying to or seemingly knock you down and trying to hold you back and pull you back from moving forward it's because they are scared and don't feel maybe they have the capacity to to move forward along with you or they're comfortable in what the situation is at present and so they are upset with you for moving forward so they're going to do anything they can to kind of if, if it means cutting you down that's what that is i do find that sometimes people hope you stay the same sometimes there are people who don't understand that it's okay for people to change and shift i'm trying to go for that one but i'm not sure if i do it. Do it. The next one is from the kindergarten teacher. The end of the road is so far ahead, it is already behind us. The end of the road is so far ahead, it is already behind us. I mean, I'm not, I don't know what he's saying there or what he means personally, but for me, I was just thinking kind of like a lot of us will be looking at the end of the road, the future, you know, every single thing you're doing, your life is centered around the future. What is going to happen in the future? And you're so hyper-focused on that, that you don't appreciate the things that are happening in the moment. And I say this as someone who does this too, and I guess holding on to this quote as a, a reminder. We try to remind ourselves of that. It's very easy to you know, we get something for our place and then we're on to the next thing yeah you know? and you can't even revel in enjoying the, the thing yeah exactly and that's why, what, why are we getting things if we can't enjoy them because even that future that you're pushing for you get that whatever it is that you want it and then you're just like okay great check let's move, move on to the next one you're not even reveling in the glory of actually <laughs> accomplishing this huge thing you're planning for you're planning ahead and you have dreams you have ambitions etc that's great but what are the things that you have in the present that you should 
open your eyes to? And also, what are the things that you're doing in the present that you should adjust? You know, are you compromising your the relationships you have with people you love for this future that is not even here, that you're not even sure is going to happen? Because sometimes we're working towards things and we get them and you realize, I don't even want that. I guess what well, reminds me of another quote, which is... <laughs> Um, which I just forgot. Enjoy where you are now because the things that you have now were only dreams way back when in the past. Enjoy them because you didn't have them at one point and there were things that you were hoping to achieve or get to make you happy. And don't think about the stuff you don't have because maybe you'll get it in the future, but remember that, you know, it takes time and you won't have everything right away. And should you even want everything? It's a good line. Mm -hmm. It's fine. The fine line. That's one from, from, from the line. That I chose mm -hmm. from her. Sometimes I think I've felt everything I'm ever gonna feel, and from here on out, I'm not gonna feel anything new, just lesser versions of what I've already felt. I believe it's Joaquin. Sometimes I think I've felt everything I'm ever gonna feel, and from here on out, I'm not gonna feel anything new. Just Lesser versions of what I've already felt. <laughs> I can feel that that feeling that he was having in the movie. That kind of I think is a feeling a lot of people have, especially in the modern world, where it's all about novelty and new experience, and you have to keep trying to do something, and you have to be always busy and doing something new. And if you're not, then you're failing. And you get to the point where you just kind of feel like you have experienced basically everything that you can, and all the new movies that come out, or the new you know anything that that could distract you or stimulate you, new food, new places to visit in the world, they're all more or less kind of the same now, you know, and that can give you a sense of pointlessness, dread, or, you know, you know well, what's the point now? I think I've, I've, I guess I've done everything, you know, have I, are humans not meant to live this long because now what else is there? But then you, that's one way of looking at, I think, the idea of experience giving meaning. But then I think another way you could look at it is, okay, maybe you have more or less experienced all the truly novel things, but then you can kind of say, okay, great. Now maybe that's when I will decide to create my own thing, become your own artist or creator of some kind once you feel like you've experienced enough art say or enough movies that you're not so much a passive observer but you want to maybe try and do some of that yourself you know i think that for me that's where i've gotten where i when i, when I felt like i'd consumed enough that i wanted to start doing my own thing producing something so i guess that is dealing more with emotions not necessarily experiences but it's a similar thing there are two things for me that come up like just because you felt something before doesn't mean it won't be just as good before or it's not worth feeling again and even if there were only two feelings in the world happiness and sadness it's worth going through experiencing those happiness is worth experiencing every day and sadness has its own worth because with sadness then you start to tap into why certain things don't sit right with you why you want something different or it tells you things about the people that make you sad and the kind of relationships you have with them whatever you've experienced again will always be valuable as far as i'm concerned it'll always teach you something new isn't it mm. talking about feelings when you think about it love right like you fall in love and let's say you've been in several relationships every single time the love is different not necessarily like how you feel towards the person or the strength of the feelings you have but like love goes beyond just the feeling right love is like how affectionate are you with each other what kinds of things do you give to do you do for each other what kind of actions do you present to each other to show love, right? If you've been in several relationships, you're experiencing one thing, loving someone else, but it's different each time and in certain ways because these are different people, they look at love differently. And so you're learning, it's an, always a new experience. If you are looking at life in that way where you're kind of like, oh, well, I've already experienced that. And you're looking for this kind of novelty. You don't actually realize that there is truly novelty in everything in that deeper way, not in that superficial way of just literally trying something you haven't tried, but in the way where you could experience something, you can feel something that you felt before, but you see certain things that you didn't see before. I think as you grow as a person, you enjoy things in different ways. It's mm -hmm. kind of like when we watch a movie, every single time we watch yeah, a movie, it's a we, enjoy, we enjoy it in a different way. We yeah. see different things, you know, but like this is exactly the same movie. Let's buy the books that resonate with us. What yeah. quotes, what are what are some of your favorite quotes from movies? Yeah. Let us know during the discussion in the comments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye. But until <laughs> next time though. I think Bye. that's it. I think that's it. Bye. <laughs> that's a wrap.